Hello, everyone. Um, thank you for coming to listen to my talk. I'm sure you came here specially for this one. No need to answer. <laughs> um, so I'm looking at the unfurnished burials of, of, of an early Anglo-Saxon cemetery, Worthy Park. Um, first of all, I'll just do my acknowledgements. Um, Australian National University, who have um, been kind enough to let me study there, the School of Archaeology and Anthropology, my former supervisor and now colleague, Mark Oxenham, and um, the places where I examined the teeth of skeletons, uh, Duckworth Museum, Southampton University, Dover Archaeological Group and the Dover Museum. Um, so thanks to all of that. And of course, thanks to the organisers of this session, which um, brought me all the way here. And I'm very excited to be here. Um, I'm just going to... Uh, this is the Anglo-Saxon cemetery, a map of the Anglo-Saxon cemetery of Worthy Park, Kingsworthy, Hampshire. Um, it was excavated in the early 1960s and is dated approximately 450 to 600 common era. Um, it contained, or excavated, were 105 individuals from 94 graves. And amongst those are eight poor men, or as I call poor men, they have no, um, buried without surviving grave goods, and eight poor women. Now, I didn't excavate this cemetery, nor did I actually examine the paleopathology of the skeleton. No. So that was done by Calvin Wells. Um, and most of the pictures you'll, come, uh, you'll see have come from the published report by Hawks and Granger. Um, my contribution is the analysis of the meaning of these uh, poor graves and um, what, what we can see from the health and disposition of these individuals. Oh, and okay, the blue ovals are the poor men and the greenish ones are the poor women. So they're sort of scattered throughout. No real um, special location for them. Um, now here are all the poor men. Um, or the poor men, or six of them, that um, could be... I'll, I'll show you the other two later that haven't been aged. Um, so they have been, most of the skeletons from this cemetery have been re-aged using the methodology of Cave and Oxenham um, to identify the elderly in this cemetery. So the ageing here is not going to necessarily match that in the published report. So they're the men. Um, here are the women. Um, I, I, as you can see, um, they still lived quite a long time, some of them. Um, now, these are the three skeletons out, out of the 16 that have been excluded. And you can see why, um, because basically we don't really know that they were poor individuals. So it's just legs or feet or little bits of... So they, they could... We cannot be sure they're poor individuals. And of course, there's not much of their remains to, to use for you know, to look at their paleopathology either. So they've been um, knocked out of this analysis. Um, to introduce Anglo -Saxon, early Anglo-Saxon burials, this is a pre-Christian cemetery. Uh, they have a highly gendered burial ritual. So in this case, women tended to be buried with brooches, with beads, jewellery, um, items that perhaps represent beauty. Um, men, not all men of course, the, uh, were buried with weapons, um, usually a shield and a spear, sometimes they get a sword, sometimes even two. Um, and things like knives, pins, buckles, pots can be buried with males, females or children, as can the other items like wrist, wrist clasps and strap ends. You don't want to talk about them when you're drunk. Um, but yeah, and so the male male um, grave goods sort of tend to highlight a martial warrior type status. But we're not looking at those people. We're looking at those buried with no goods. And as you can see from the graph, the tall graphs are the people buried with goods, and the smaller ones without. 
Um, and yeah, you can see that um, in general, the oldest age category is reserved for people buried with goods. Um, females and males. Um, the average age of death with w uh, women with goods was 46 years and those without goods, with poor, poor women, was 40.1 years. So that's, I haven't done a statistical test on that to see whether that's significant or not, but it is a fair dif difference. Now, strangely, for the men, the average age of death of poor men is 46.7 and men with goods is only 41.8. Now, I suspect that's because if you see the, the male graph, the 19 to 29 um, people with goods for males is very high. And I wonder if that relates to wars, battles, fights on the Sunday night in the pub or whatever. Um, but it perhaps is an activity that the male poorer members were excluded from. Um, now, the oldest individual in this category is a woman, um, and she was re-aged to 65 to 74 years. Um, I mean, she was old, so it's not surprising she shows lots of um, um, pathological lesions, um, and you can read through all of those. I'm not going to try and pronounce them all here when I'm in a state of nervous, and I've got a little bit of coffee left. <laughs> Um, now, if we look at the, now this this particular graph comes from three cemeteries um, for so it's Worthy Park plus Great Chesterford and Mill Hill are all similarly dated early Anglo-Saxon cemeteries, and so the combined people without goods. So for hyperplasia, you can see that people with no goods suffered at almost at twice the rate of those without. Um, Cribra, Orbitalia and osteoarthritis trauma, the poor people had more of it. But surprisingly, um, for teeth, they had fewer abscesses and fewer antemortem tooth loss and fewer caries. Now this is for the poor women, um, so you just wonder if they have been excluded from a karyogenic food. None of those statistics were statistically different, but they were different. Um, I'm going to, uh, as we go through this talk, I'll introduce you to various poor people. So this old fellow, he lived. He was the oldest poor man, or one of the equally oldest. Lived 55 to 64 years, approximately. His grave was deep, and you can see it's quite spacious as well. He's got plenty of room around him. Um, he's got um, some fair bits of trauma on him. Um, perhaps the original uh, report suggested he'd been in a sleazy brawl, presumably on a Saturday night. Um, he, and being old, it's not surprising he was much afflicted with arthritis um, and all sorts of things. And he had very well-developed musculature, which sort of suggests hard work. Um, now, for the men, um, the total number of lesions and all sorts of things, this is just the Worthy Park men. I think I've got arrows here. Um, for the most part, the um, poor men did worse than the wealthy men. I don't think I can call them wealthy men. The men with goods. Um, so, LEH is, well, 53 point... Oh, I don't know whether I've stuffed up that. Um, but 50, <laughs> that's a, a big difference there, but it, I think it may be part, oh, right, gosh, I'm getting through, yes. Well, anyway, largely more lesions, um, some things different. Okay, oh, more arrows. Um, there's only one male individual from this cemetery with Cribra or Orbitalia, which is, is an interesting um, fact. And this is him. He died between 45 to 54 years, but the interesting thing about him, he was born without his um, right, right arm or, sorry, it's either right or left. 
one of those, one arm and um, shoulder completely missing. Um, he's got injuries to him, fractured face, etc., sword injuries, um, and has been, you know, quite ill at times. But he and his skeleton shows changes that suggest he's come to to get used to having only one arm. And now the grave size of um, these individuals, um, on the whole, people without goods were buried in smaller graves. Now if you can just look at that picture, which is not um, Worthy Park, but you can see the comparison of one of the smaller graves to one of the larger graves, and it makes a big difference. That lady was pretty well squashed in there. Um, again, for the men, the grave size, um, in, in all the dimensions, depth, width, height, um, volume. Um, the poor men have smaller graves than the rich men. Again, I use that term. And another thing I looked at was what I called awkward burials. So burials that are a bit careless, you know, the feet might be squashed in at the end, not exactly lying comfortably, maybe thrown in any old way. Um, so five out of the 12 of the poor women in the three cemeteries, obviously, have awkward burials, and that's 41%, whereas only 15% of the women in, grave, in graves with goods. Now, number 43 there is also very prone, um, and she may, possibly, I think she may have her feet and hands tied. I um, can't say that for sure, but her ankles are certainly together and her arms are sort of in front of her like that, so it's possible they were tied. Um, and I think I've said all that, but basically um, this is a statistically significant result that um, old women, well, women were buried, women without goods were buried awkwardly. Um, another we're just we're running out of time, so that's another poor old man, um, and another poor old woman. We are running out of time. Um, so in general, I, I forgot to do the analysis for the men in the awkward grave, so I can't talk about that. But in general, we found that the men had a very hard working life. They were subject to lots of violence, and little effort was expended on their graves. And of course, these graves are mostly undatable because Anglo-Saxon graves are largely dated through grave goods. You know, were they slaves? Were they native British? I mean, these are sort of people with more notice needs to be taken of in the archaeological record. Um, now, the poor women also buried with less care and effort and more likely to have pathological lesions, but their teeth were better than their betters. And they, did they have, you know, what food were they given? More trauma, but not as much as their men folks suffered. And when I was thinking about this in the shower the other day, this is the picture that came to my mind. <laughs> you see here a man. He owns the place. He's ready. He, he doesn't care what anyone else thinks. He's there ready. Um, if anyone came and um, disagreed with him, he'd tell them what's what. Now, the women sitting next to him, they're accommodating him. They're saying, yeah, don't worry about me. That's all right. I'll squash over here. And that, even today, is the sort of thing, especially people like older, I'm not old at all, okay? <laughs> I'm still young. Young people like me have grown up with and sort of automatically assume, you know, be polite, don't push the buttons, and, and I just wonder if that was the case in early Anglo-Saxon England. The women had tough lives, but they weren't, they didn't have the trauma. They were treated badly, thrown into graves prone, awkwardly, so they were punished. Um, so that's my thoughts on that. And there are my references, and I think my timing is not too bad. <laughs>